So this is the beginning of Unit 6, um, which has to do a lot with trigonometry. And before we actually get to trigonometry, we're going to remember some geometric or some geometry concepts. All right, so trigonometry has to do a lot with angles and triangles. So we're going to just do some um, brief review on those things. So first of all, when we talk about an angle, um, remember an angle is two rays adjoined at a ver common point, which is a vertex. And the initial side of the angle is going to be our base uh, of our angle, or it's the ray that is along, and most of our angles are gonna be along uh, a graph. So it's the ray along the x-axis. And the terminal side is the, the side that opens up to the degree measure. So it's the ending position at that degree measure. So the ending position at a degree measure. So if an angle is in standard position, it does have a ray that's along the x-axis, like we see here. And then the other ray, or the terminal side of our angle, is uh, showing us how far the angle is opening. So that would be right here. Okay, so this from one side, or from one ray to the other, is our angle measure. Okay, so um, if our ray is opening up in the counterclockwise direction, okay, so this is going counterclockwise, this is a positive measure. And if our terminal side is opening up in a clockwise direction, this would be a negative measure, negative degree measure. Okay. So in example one, it is asking us to draw some angles. So these are going to be in standard position. So if I have some axes here, and if I take my initial side and I put it along the x-axis, and then I'm going to measure. Okay, so we know if um, I have a right angle, it's going to be on the, the initial side is going to be along the x-axis, and the terminal side will be along the y-axis. So a 45 degree angle is halfway in between. So we would say that this is 45 degrees. Okay. 90 degrees, um, if I am measuring a positive 90, it would go up to the positive uh, y-axis, but because I'm measuring 90 degrees, I'm going in the other direction. I'm going clockwise. So we know that um, 225 degrees, this is 90, this is 180. And if I think about how far I have to go, I'm just going to mark this. This is 180 degrees. This is 270 degrees down here if I were to keep going. But 225 is, it looks like it'd be halfway between um, 180 and 270. Um, this difference is uh, 90 degrees. If I add half of that, 45 degrees would give me 225 degrees. So this is where my terminal side is going to be. And this shows 
a measure of 225 degrees. Now, 405 degrees, um, we should know that one full revela revelation around the um, axes is 360 degrees. Okay, that's marked down there. So if I go past 360 degrees, I kind of start over again um, in terms of 90, 170, 270, 360, and I keep going around in a circle until I get that degree measure. So if I subtract 360 degrees from this, this is going to tell me to go 45 degrees more. So I go all the way in a full circle and then 45 degrees more will give me 306, whoops, 405 degrees. All right, so if we notice the first and the last angles look the same, okay? The, the rays are in the same position. And we call those co-terminal angles. And that's when the terminal side is in the same position. Okay, so they have different measures, 45 degrees and 405 degrees, but the angles look the same because their terminal side is in the same position. So now we're looking at um, converting between decimals, I'm sorry, yeah, decimals and degrees and another unit of angle measure, which is in degrees, minutes, and seconds. Okay, so another way to measure angles, and actually we have three ways. One of them's degrees, one of them is radians, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. But another way, and this is used mostly in navigation. And when I talk about navigation, I'm talking about um, a sailboat or a big ship or even an airplane um, in terms of changing direction and how many degrees they need to turn to aim the boat or the plane. Okay, so we have here that one degrees is 60, and then there's this little um, apostrophe up here, and that indicates minutes. And then one minute is 60 seconds, just like in terms of time. Okay, so if I have an angle measure that says um, 27 degrees, 31 minutes, and 19, whoops, minutes is a apostrophe, and 19 seconds. Oops, put that there. Okay, this is what that would look like. So on the next page, we're going to do some um, conversions. So in part A, it's asking us to convert 56 degrees, 6 minutes, 21 seconds to a decimals in degrees and to round to four places. All right, so 56 is going to be our whole number. That's how many degrees we have. And then we have 6 minutes. Now, 6 minutes is out of a minute is 60, there's 60 minutes in a degree. So six out of 60 minutes in a degree. And then we have 21 seconds. And if we calculate how many seconds are in a degree, that would be 3,600. Just like how many seconds are in a minute or um, in an hour. Um, so there would be 60 minutes in an hour 
and 60 times 60 seconds in an hour. So this would represent the number of minutes in a, a degree. And this would represent the number of seconds in a degree. Now, if I were to use a calculator, I would just put in what I see here, 56 plus 6 out of 60, 6 divided by 60, plus 21 divided by 3600 would be 1058. So this measurement here would be 56.1058 degrees. Okay, so this is the part that's after the decimal. Okay. All right, so we take each piece and put it over the appropriate number of units in a degree. So this would be the number of minutes in a degree and the number of seconds in the degree. Okay, and then we just calculate those. Now it says in part B to convert 21.256 degrees to degrees, minutes, and seconds. All right, so the first part is easy because I know I have 21 degrees and I'm going to add to that 0.256 times 60. Okay. So what that will tell me is I have 21 degrees and if I multiply these two together I'm going to get plus 15.36 minutes. Now I'm going to take this 0.36 minutes and I'm going to multiply it times 60 again and this will tell me how many seconds. So this is minutes and then this part will be seconds. And in the end, I'll have 21 degrees plus 15 minutes plus 22 seconds. Okay, so again, we don't use this measurement very often, um, but it, it is something that is um, used specifically in navigation. All right, so the other measurement of angles that I mentioned uh, was radians. And uh, for a radian, um, a full revolution around the unit circle is 2 pi radians. Now remember that we had 360 degrees was one revolution around the circle. In terms of radians, one full revolution around the circle is 2 pi. So if going all the way around is 2 pi, we have halfway around is pi. All right, so one radian is the same as um, Sorry, this is 2 pi radians, and this is pi ra radians. So um, here, and if we think about our formula, circumference, and that's all the way around the circle, equals 2 pi times the radius, and the radius is the radian. Okay, so um, 360 degrees is one revolution, 180. 80 degrees is halfway around, and that's what pi is. Okay, so over here it says for arc length. 
Now we've looked at arc length before in geometry if I have a circle. And here is my, um, my radius. And here is an angle. My arc length is the side of the circle that is in between my two radiuses or my two uh, rays of my circle. Okay, so S stands for the distance of my arc length and R is my radius and theta is my angle and it's my angle measure and it has to be in radians. All right, so simple formula here. And in example three, it says to find the length of the arc of a circle of radius two and has a central angle of 0.25 radians. All right, so radius is R, theta is 0.25 radians, and this will tell us our arc length. Okay, so it looks like this. So my radius is two, my theta is 0.25, and it's going to give me this distance. So the S equals two times 0.25, which is one half. And my measurement is in meters. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about radians. In the next week or so, you're gonna get much more familiar with um, changing degree measures of angles to radian measures. But basically, one degree is pi over 180 radians. Okay, so remember I, I talked on the other side about halfway across. So this is pi radians. And it's also 180 degrees. Okay, so 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. So if I look at this, um, if I take any number of degrees in my angle and multiply it by pi over 180, that's how I change it to radians. And likewise, if I want to change an angle measure that's in radians to degrees, I'm just divided by, I'm multiplying that by 180 divided by pi degrees. So let's look at some examples of that on example four. I'm going to use this ratio, okay? Either pi over 180 degrees or 180 degrees over pi. So if I start with 60 degrees and in dimensional analysis, if I'm using one of these um, formulas, and I want to cancel my units, I need to go across. Okay, one on top, the other one has to go on bottom. So I'm going to have 180 degrees is one pi radians. All right, so if I cancel here, 60 goes into 180 three, over, three times. So I have pi over three radians is the same thing as 360, or just 60 degrees. 150 times pi over 180. My degrees are one on top, one on bottom. If I reduce my fractions here, I'm going to have 15 pi over 18. I just divided by 10, and I can still reduce this by dividing both sides by 3 which would give me five pi over six. 
negative 45, this just gives us our direction, but I have 45 degrees times pi over 180 degrees. So 45 goes into 884 times, so this is pi over 4. 90 degrees times pi over 180, that's 2, that's pi over 2. 107, so if I take 107 degrees and multiply it by pi over 180, um, I don't think that's reducible. So I'm going to have 107 over 180 pi. All right, so now, likewise, I'm going to go backwards. In part A here, I have pi over 6. So this time I am going to multiply um, by my same 180 over pi, but actually 180 is what I want to end up with degrees. I'm going to end up with degrees. So this time I'm going to multiply by 180 over pi. So here the pi's cancel. 6 goes into 180 30 times. So that's 30 degrees. If I multiply this by 180 over pi, 2 goes into 180 90 times. 90 times 3, and by the way, the pi's cancel. 90 times 3 is 270 times 180 over pi here. The pi's cancel. 3 goes into 180 6 times, and 6 times 7 is 420 degrees. Now, if I have 3 radians, and I don't have anything with pi this time, I just have 3 radians, I'm going to multiply that still by 180. I'm changing this to degrees, so I want the degrees on top. 180 over pi. So this would be 3 times 180 is 540. Divided by pi, if I'm changing this to degrees, I'm going to divide this by 3.14. And I get about... 54.71 degrees. <laughs> All right, last piece, finding the area of a sector. Now, a sector, kind of very similar to when we wanted to find the arc length, the area of the sector would be the area in between the two rays. Okay, it's the whole area instead of just this length. So we have a formula that says one half times the radius squared times theta. And again, theta has to be the measure in radians. All right, so here it says to find the area of a sector of the circle, the radius is 2 feet, the angle is 30 degrees, and we're rounding to the nearest two decimals, so two numbers after the decimal point. All right, so I'm using that formula. Now my radius is 2 feet, so I'm going to plug in 2 here and square it, and then I need to know what is 30 degrees as a radian measure? So I have 30 degrees, and I'm going to multiply by 180 degrees and the ratio of 180 degrees and pi. Degrees is what I start with, so I got to put 180 degrees on the bottom so that my degrees cancel. 180 degrees is still pi. So this is pi over 6. 
and that's what I put in my formula. And if I calculate 2 squared is 4, half of 4 is 2 times pi over 6. This is going to give me pi over 3. And I'm working with area. My units are feet, so this would be square feet. Area is square units. And then again, if I want to calculate this and um, get a number, I'm going to have 3.14 divided by 3 is 1.05 square feet. All right, so that's just a little bit of review with geometry, um, especially with angles and um, circles.